Last night, when the Warriors had a matchup against the Jazz, I honestly was expecting a loss since Draymond Green's exit really changed this Warriors team on both sides of the floor. Now, Draymond Green has been out since January 9th against the Cavaliers. And since then, the Warriors are 23rd when it comes to offensive efficiency, which is obviously a huge gap to take notice. In our previous videos, we mentioned that the guard situation where this roster is completed with 8 guards and the lack of depth in the center position is really hurting the team. I think this game against the Jazz just pretty much amplified the problem. Despite winning the game last night, this Warriors team have some major voids they have to fill in their roster. In today's video, we'll be breaking down the final two minutes of last night's game between the Warriors and the Jazz and point out some key areas that can drag this Warriors team down in the competitive Western Conference. And with that being said, let's roll the intro. Hi. Yo, what's up guys, Jason here, back with another video. If it's your first time watching, I make Golden State Warriors content and break down news and rumors from all angles. So if you want full-time Warriors coverage, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and you will always be notified when I upload new videos. Now, we have about 15 days left until the NBA trade deadline, and I was expecting the Warriors to make some minor moves here and there to fill up their roster. Although heavy 4-4 record in the past 8 games and almost lose to the Jazz last night, we got some surprising update. According to Anthony Slater of The Athletic, quote, Dream on Green and James Wiseman are out indefinitely, but the Warriors have no plans to add a center, per sources. Kevon Looney's durable season is a major reason. Okay, this is already concerning. Draymond Green's injury is already affecting these Warriors to a significant degree as they have fallen from the past 8 games and lots of teams such as the Pacers and the Wolves. Wiseman's injury also seems worse than what we thought. Let me make this clear. I don't hate James Wiseman, but the usage of this second overall pick is a waste as of right now. I am starting to see comments in Warriors community tab in my comment section that people want the team to send Wiseman away. To be honest, I don't know what the team should do now with James Wiseman. We drafted him two years ago with the number two overall pick and we were expecting him to be the starting center for many years to come. But now it seems like there will be a huge delay between the reality and our expectations. Alright, now let's move on to the film and take a look at why there are some major concerns the Warriors have to address. I'll be using pictures here instead of film because NBA loves to send me copyright claims. Alright, so there are two minutes left in this game and the Warriors are up at two points. Steph Curry and Jordan Poole did their typical downscreen play. Poole made a good move here to cut to the basket. As you can tell, both Jazz players are focusing on Steph, and Otto Porter Jr. fed the ball to Poole in the paint. Jordan Poole did a nice pump fake here and have a pretty much clear layup, but he didn't make the layup, and Kavon Looney here grabbed the offensive rebound and made a three-point play as he was fouled. Now look, Kavon Looney here had Eric Pascal on him. The Jazz switched out Rudy Gobert on purpose here because they want to make sure to keep the pace up and the floor open. But then if it's a playoffs game against say the Lakers or the Nuggets, Looney is to a matchup against players like Anthony Davis or Nikola Jokic and to be honest, I don't have the confidence that Looney will get it done this easily. Okay, now the Warriors up by 5 points and there is 1 minute and 40 seconds left. Steph first made a stop on defense here, stealing the ball from Mike Conley. Jordan Poole now pushed the ball up with 1 minute and 31 seconds left on the clock. Looney set screen on Steph and then Steph found Andrew Wiggins in the corner. Basically a wide open 3 and Wiggins missed it. Here's one more concern. If teams want to win games in the playoffs in clutch moments, you have to make this kind of shot, especially for the fact that you are that open. Now the Jazz got the ball back, and just look at how open the paint was, and 12 of the 5 Warriors players were still getting back on defense. Mike Conley then drove to the basket, an amazing block here by Aldo Porter Jr. But look, Warriors have the basketball with a 5 point lead, and there is 1 minute left on the clock. What the team should be doing is burn as much time as possible and drive to the paint. Obviously, there is a much better chance to get fouled and the opposing team will less likely be able to start the transition. Now, the ball goes to Steph and just look at how open Andrew Wiggins was, but then Steph took a difficult shot and the Jazz got the ball back. 
what's so frustrating about the falling possession is that the Warriors transition defense without Draymond Green just looks lost. You have three players basically all lined up and Kevon Looney is still getting back on defense. Joe Angles here was wide open so Steph here has to help and then that leads to the corner wide wide open and Bogdanovich delivered the three pointer. Now the Jazz is only down by two points and there are 32.4 seconds left. Steph got the ball and passes to Andrew Wiggins. As you can see here, open driving lane. Wiggins made the correct read and drove to the paint, but instead of taking that short range fadeaway against the short defender, Wiggins passed the ball to Jordan Poole who attempted a difficult three pointer. Just look at this two back to back position, they both ended up with difficult three point shots. Without Dream on Green, this worst offense is just way too simple. Less than 10 seconds, and the Jazz has the ball, and basically it's a one on one play between Bogdanovich and Porter. I'm glad that the three pointer was no good, but look under the paint. Jazz got the offensive rebound and almost tied the game. Okay, don't get me wrong here, I would take every win possible, but here are a few problems. Number 1. Offensive Efficiency Like we mentioned, this Warriors offense without Dream on Green is way too simple and it's easy to fall into a loophole where the team keeps taking bad shots behind the arc, which then led to another problem, bad transition defense. If you miss the 3 and make a stop on defense, I have no problem with that. But leaving a good shooter like Bogdanovich wide wide open in the corner was just unacceptable. Lastly, what really kills his team right now is rebounding. Last game against the Jazz, the Warriors gave up 18 offensive rebounds. The Warriors gave up 13 offensive rebounds against the Pacers and took an L. Against the Wolves, the team got destroyed by Carl Anthony Towns. And against the Bucks, the team had zero chance on stopping Giannis. And today, hearing the team has no plan to acquire a new center is really a concern. But what if Kevon Looney got injured? By then, the media be elites will be the only big man left, and that's clearly not enough depth. Now the question goes to you guys, if you're the front office, what would you do? Let me know in the comment section down below. Alright guys, so this wraps up the video. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and follow me on social media with all the links in the description down below. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next episode. Peace.